During the Ukrainian counter-offensive in the summer of 2023, the elite 47th Brigade went into battle with Leopard 2A6 tanks and M2 Bradley infantry fighting vehicles. However, in the first months of the counter-offensive, the brigade lost a lot of Western military equipment and changed its tactics. In September 2024, the 47th Brigade received its first respite, redeploying to the territory of the Dnipropetrovsk district, Forbes reports. The brigade is currently being rebuilt, military equipment is being repaired, and there is hope that the US will supply another batch of Bradleys. Earlier this week, the US announced a new $250 million military aid package, which includes the M2 BPM. The armored vehicle can carry up to 10 people and is equipped with 25mm cannons and tow anti-tank missiles. The exact number of M2s that the US will supply to Ukraine is unknown, but there are more than a thousand in storage facilities. The 47th Brigade, which has received the most American armor, still needs it, as it has demonstrated its skills on the battlefield. Currently, the battles are conducted with the help of both Bradley and M1 Abrams tanks in 31 units, as well as assault breacher armored vehicles in six units. Of all the Western military armored vehicles that Ukraine has received since 2022, the most reliable and combat ready has proven to be the Bradley armored vehicle. Experts say the 47th Brigade's three battalions have 100 Bradleys each. The general staff of Ukraine constantly throws the 47th Brigade into the hottest spots of the front. At first, there was the defense of Avdiivka. After nine months of daily fighting, the brigade left the front in early September to rest and recover. After the enemy broke through the Ukrainian Armed Forces defenses in the Ocharetino area, the soldiers from the 47th Brigade were thrown into battle again. In just five months of intense fighting, the brigade lost 30% of its Abrams and up to 20 Bradley vehicles on the battlefield. It is difficult to predict how long the 47th Mechanized Brigade will rest. Enemy forces are still advancing toward Pokrovsk and are also making small gains north and south of the city. Russian Armed Forces serviceman and popular Z blogger Yegor Guzenko posted a series of videos on Telegram in which he complains about the progress of the so-called SVO. He threatens the Russian authorities with an uprising. He was especially outraged by the situation in the Kursk region, where the Ukrainian armed forces took Russian troops into operational encirclement. In the fighting in this area, the Z blogger lost a close friend, captain of the Russian armed forces Artem Matul. Here in the Kursk region, in Sudza, the bridges were destroyed all around, and ours were building pontoon bridges. Tima died, Artem Vladimirovich Matul, a captain. If we had destroyed all the bridges to the Ukrainians at the very beginning, there would have been no weapon supplies there. Everything ended there long ago. But we do everything in the opposite direction. How wrong! It's a shame to the depths of my soul. We once believed in all this and went to war and honestly fought for all this nonsense. And the Russian authorities were having fun at this time, organizing seminars and negotiations. What is happening now is all betrayal. Traitors are sitting in the Kremlin, planes are crashing, explosions are happening, inconvenient people are being removed, are being put in prison. We must understand that when we return from the front, the war will not be over for us. Traitors have captured the country. There are many of us. We are a whole country. And there is a bunch of you sitting there. You are old. You will die soon, Guzenko said. He also threatens to hand over Russian state Duma deputies to Ukraine in exchange for the release of Russian soldiers from captivity. Every deputy must understand that he can become an exchange fund. We will exchange one deputy, give to the Ukrainians so that he can be hanged publicly. Let them have fun. And we will also watch on TV. I will even turn on the Ukrainian channel for this, said Yegor Guzenko.